What do you think are the biggest challenges facing Americans today? This country is falling into a third world kind of paradigm. I mean, from beginning up until now, I can see the decline. I mean, I think it depends on the American. I feel like a lot of different people are facing a lot of different problems. And me, as like a white woman, I'm not really facing the problems that I feel like a lot of immigrants are facing and black people are facing, things like that. And I think those are like super huge problems. I mean, got like the healthcare issue, we've got like homelessness, got all like the abortion problems. The world is full of challenges, obviously, and horrible things happen. But I think the inequality of distributing our resources is the biggest challenge. I'm 81 years old. Years old. It's gotten worse and worse in the last 40 years or so. We are a super rich country and we've got super poor people living here and working poor people who labor every day and can't make ends meet. We're paying so much for like college and school and food even, housing, like prices are like insane. Like even gas is just going up, like our rent's going up this month. It's also sad that like some older Americans are still still working because they have to, not because they like enjoy what they're doing. Everything's turning criminal. Crime on the street, of course it's gonna be crime. No jobs, what do you expect? People are gonna survive. They're gonna do whatever's necessary to survive, to make a living. When your family is hungry and you have no other means, what are you gonna do if there's no jobs? Leave your family hungry? The economy's tanked. I mean, they've adjusted down employment, so it looks like there's more people employed. So we really don't know what the economy looks like. What do you think about the economy in America? I think that the economy is in a heightened state of emergency. I feel the prices. I feel the need to be more creative with my spending. Like I just bought an electric car out of necessity necessity because I couldn't pay for gasoline and petroleum anymore. It's a robust economy. I'm retired. I have a pension. I own the little condominium I live in. I have a great life. I can come and protest. I can come and talk to reporters. Good for me. Not good enough. My neighbors are hungry. My neighbors are not getting compensated for the labor they put into their jobs. My neighbors can't guarantee education for their children. That's an America I'm not satisfied with. I think it's better than people suspect. I mean, my parents went through the depression. So tell me that this is a bad economy. There's just no way. People are very susceptible to alternative facts. I think the 24 seven news cycle coupled with social media is gonna be the down fall of this country as we knew it. Are you afraid for the younger generations? I tell people all the time, I'm happy I'm 72 and not 22. I'm 81 because I'm healthy and because I have good parents. I might live to be 100, I might. It's not me who's in trouble, it's you. You have decades and decades and decades to live. And if we don't make things better, people are gonna look at the color of your skin and decide that, no, I don't think he's ready for the big time reporter job. Maybe in some markets where there are a lot of black people, but no, he can't be on national this or he can't be doing that. That's the way some people think. And if we allow that to be the norm, we allow that to be accepted, then we do harm to everybody. I mean, I have uh, a daughter and a son. Their generation is here. Mine is gone. The baton is in you guys' hands. So where you guys take this country is up to you because we're kind of on the sideline. And with the state in which America is today and all the social issues that are driving Americans away from each other, the most important question to ask might be existential. Is there still optimism? A hope that things will get better. Do Americans still believe in the American dream? The American dream. American dream. The American dream. Is the American dream dead? You hear the phrase American exceptionalism. The only thing exceptional about America is unfulfilled potential. No, that's laughable. That is absolutely laughable. You know, I think like the idea of the American dream is like great, like move to America, get a job, get rich, like have a great life, blah, blah, blah. Like I think some people totally are able to accomplish that. But I think depending on where you come from, especially with institutionalized systems, of discrimination, it's really difficult for a lot of people to really achieve that. I don't think the American dream has died. I think it has just changed. It used to be a picket fence in a house, and then once that was achieved and it became the social norm, then it just changed to something different. I think the United States is in a shifting mode right now, just like any other country. Kamala could be the first female president. That's a shift. Even when Barack Obama 
became the president. That's a shift. This country, it has its bad pros and cons, but I wouldn't trade it for any other country. Do you think that the American dream is dead? No, absolutely not. But I'm afraid it's in grave danger. I come down here because I see the dream I had when I was a child, the dream that my immigrant parents inculcated in me. I see that dream fading. I don't have children of my own, it happens. But I have young people in my life. I look around here, I see ch a child over there. Why wouldn't I care about that little girl? I want her to have the chance that I had. But it's not possible as long as politics is controlled by money and as long as political philosophy is dictated by money. We've got to work against that. The economy collapsed. There were no jobs. Unemployment rate rose to 15%. It was terrible. The only jobs he created are for illegal immigrants. He has not done a good job and inflation is killing our country. It is absolutely killing us. We have this international crisis that really requires federal intervention that local government is being asked to subsidize. Local government is not designed or built to handle such a crisis. There's one issue that polarizes Americans quite a lot, and that might be a crucial factor in deciding who they will vote for come November. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> Immigration has always been an issue in American politics. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. I will not demonize immigrants saying they are poisoned in the blood of our country. In 2023, there was a record-breaking number of migrants crossing the border between the United States and Mexico, starting what many consider to be a border crisis. But do all Americans really see it as a problem? You think there's an immigration crisis in America? No. <laughs> Why do you think some people complain about it? I think they're looking for someone to blame for their problems, and I think Trump has conned them into thinking that if you just point the finger at the person who's other, it exonerates you from your own problems. There's a lot of people who assume that with a lot of immigrants comes less jobs. I don't agree. Most of the time, those immigrants are taking the jobs that other people aren't taking anyway. So why are you upset? Mm. There's thousands of people coming through the border. I'm not against immigration or nothing like that, but I do think there has to be some laws in place that have to be followed. Why do you think it's an issue? Well, because we don't know who's coming in, and I have a lot of friends that came here legally, they went to college here, and for them it's so hard to get a green card, so hard to stay here and work. And then you see all these people that are coming in through the border, why can they come in so easily and get so many benefits, and then the people that are here legally and have gotten an education and paid their taxes and worked, and it's so hard for them to stay. There's that really an imbalance there. There's an immigration crisis with the acceptance of immigrants who follow the proper procedures set forth by Americans. And then there's also an issue with illegal immigration as well. The line is really blurred between discrimination and enforcing the laws that we set for immigration. This country is built off immigration. Columbus migrated here. A lot of Americans are from other countries. This is a melting pot. I'm a child of an immigrant myself, you know, but it's generations. As someone who grew up in Texas and who lived with free immigration for generations, I think it's a manufactured talking point for the right wing. And if you do a study of Latin American history, you will see that one of the biggest reasons for the influx of immigrants to this country is the intervention of the United States in the governments of Latin America in order to protect America. American business interests that more often than not created civil wars, which then resulted in the collapse of governments, which then resulted in immigration to this country. So the United States is greatly to blame for whatever immigration problems we have. There is a crisis, but it's not insoluble. My folks were childhood immigrants. They came from Eastern Europe. It was difficult. They were in danger in Eastern Europe. America welcomed them. But they welcomed them to work, and my folks worked hard. But because they worked hard, they could see a future for my sister and for me, where we'd be able to get education, where we'd be able to lead a much more plentiful life than they did. We don't treat immigrants now as if they need to come here. We treated every immigrant as if they come here just to take things from our country. It's not true. I don't want open borders. Somebody has a criminal record, somebody's involved in drugs, 
somebody is a gang member who abuses other people, I want to identify them before they ever cross our border and reject them. But that doesn't mean because somebody else comes who sort of looks like them, maybe comes from the same background, but a decent person who wants to come here for a decent life, for me to reject everybody who's brown because some brown people are bad, or everybody who's Muslim, some Muslims are horrible people, I admit that, I don't want them here. But I sure as heck don't want to reject every woman who wears a hijab or every man who prays toward Mecca. I don't want to reject him for that reason or her for that reason. That's not the America I was raised in, not the America my folks came to. And this is an opinion that I believe many Americans can resonate with. One that is nuanced enough to see that there is a problem that needs solving, but radicality is not necessarily a solution. But I wanted to see what an immigrant will have to say on the issue. ¿Qué piensas de la gente de los Estados Unidos que dice que inmigrante es una cosa buena para el país? El problema es que como en este país hay gente de todo el mundo y hay gente que de repente pues viene a hacer daño a este país, pero no todos venimos a hacer daño a este país. La mayoría venimos a trabajar porque tenemos una familia que mantener, tenemos un futuro pues adelante sacar a nuestra familia adelante. La mayoría de personas no venimos con esa mentalidad de venir a hacerle daño a este país, no. Venimos para poder salir adelante y poder ayudar a nuestra familia. Trabajar duro. Sí. So I guess we'll see what direction America decides to take on November 5th. In the meantime, let me know what other country you want me to explore and click right here if you want to learn more about another part of the world.